All right, Mokadon is right, is back at you. And today, what we have for you is some really exciting Trump news. We're going to sort of do it in reverse order here a little bit, uh, or in the order of most recent to least recent. We'll cover the shooting last. I've got uh, the video of the shooter as he clumsily, I don't know what you want to call it, bear crawls on the roof. Um, and we will go over the shooting video itself and some of my thoughts on that. But first, let's talk about J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance is Donald Trump's pick for vice president and, I believe, for the 48th president of the United States. J.D. is a senator from Ohio. Uh, he's been in office only a couple of years. He's young enough that this is really represents the passing from the older generation to the new generation, which is something I think very much needs to happen. J.D. Vance is a solid conservative from a solid red state. So uh, whether they, I don't know if they're going to have a special election or what they're going to do in Ohio, but he will be replaced by another Republican. Uh, he was the guy that Donald Trump Jr. has been really suggesting. And, you know, there's always a risk when you pass the torch to younger guys. But I have to tell you, it's time that's done. I think Donald Trump made a very wise choice in picking J.D. Vance. Uh, by the way, it's cocktail time here in the Mocha Don household. Here is, um, here is the Channel 5, uh, I think it's Cleveland News. Talking about J.D. Vance, give you his basic bio, but I think he's a good guy. I think he's the right choice. J.D. Vance grew up in southwest Ohio. Surrounded by poverty and addiction, he yearned for more. He enlisted in the Marines after graduating from high school and served in Iraq before returning home to pursue degrees at Ohio State and Yale Law School, where he met his future wife, Usha. They married in 2014 and have three young kids. Vance first came onto the national scene as an author with his 2016 best-selling book, Hillbilly Elegy, a memoir of a family and culture in crisis, highlighting his upbringing in Southwest Ohio and his journey to success. Experiences he took to voters in 2021 when he launched his first bid for public office, seeking to fill the seat of retiring U.S. Senator Rob Portman. Well, so we got to send somebody to the Senate who's not responsive to Democrat or Republican elites, actually serves the people. He faced a crowded field of Republican hopefuls, all essentially vying for the endorsement and a former President Donald Trump. Vance, though, had a huge hurdle to overcome. His past comments critical of Trump. He was the subject of ads looking to turn Trump voters against him. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. Vance explaining his comments to me in 2022 as evolution. I was wrong, right? I mean, I think it's pretty simple that when the facts change in this country, you ought to change your mind. And Trump was, I think, a very good president uh, for the people of Ohio. He was a very good president for the country. And I think, it's just, you know, you got to be honest with people. At the end of the day, I can't hide from the fact that I criticized him six years ago. Also, not going to hide from the fact that I think he was a great president. I've been supporting him for the past several years. With the help of Donald Trump Jr., Vance was able to make the case to the former president who endorsed him just ahead of the Ohio Republican primary. We have to pick somebody that can win. And this guy is... He's tough, he's smart. It was a win that his back he needed. Trump's endorsement propelling Vance from the middle of the pack to a clear win for the GOP nomination. They wanted to write a story that this campaign would be the death of Donald Trump's America First agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, it ain't the death of the America First agenda. He would go on to defeat Democrat Tim Ryan in November of 2022 and be sworn in January 3rd of 2023. He took many staunch conservative stands, but he also was very open to working with the other side of the aisle, introducing bills with Democrats like Mark Kelly, Elizabeth Warren, and more than a few with Sherrod Brown. If you're not careful, people are gonna think you went to Washington to get things done. Well, I think I think you have to go to Washington to get things done. I mean, I, I didn't. I, this is not a high price debating society, John. To me, I didn't want to get here and sit on my hands and and go on TV and yell at people. I wanted to actually get things done. The Senate was a springboard of exposure to a national audience, as I told him in his first interview after he won the seat in 2022. It would be when this stage was set in the primary, Tim Ryan versus J.D. Vance. I said to myself and others that. Whoever wins this race will immediately be thrust into the national conversation of their party. We're going to have a presidential election coming up in less than two years. Would you be open to being part of your party's ticket? 
<laughs> uh, uh, you're the first person who's asked me that, and certainly not. I think my wife would kill me, um, and probably probably a few other people as well. Still, as Vance's stock continued to rise, his thoughts once again evolved, and as his name rose among the short list of vice presidential hopefuls this year, his answer changed. Have sure. you had that conversation with the former president? And if so, would you be interested in it? Yeah, so so I would be interested in it, John, because I think that we have to help elect President Trump. I think he's the best person for the job. A message he will now be taking to voters across the country. John Kasich, News 5. Yeah, that's right. I think J.D. Vance is a great pick. Again, passing the torch to a new generation. Very qualified guy, but young. He's going to be around a long time. Um, four years from now, he may be the best guy to be president. Who knows? We'll find out. He'll have to prove himself. Uh, he will be the next vice president. Of that, I have no doubt. The left um, <clears throat> is going to hate him. And I kind of like the fact that the left is going to hate him. So he's the news today. We're going to find out a lot more about him as time goes on. But we've known him for a while. Like me. Donald Trump made his way into J.D.'s heart like Donald Trump made his way into my heart. And I, I think this was a great pick. I fully support it. Okay, let's talk for a minute about the fact that Trump's trial in Florida is dismissed. It's done. Judge Eileen Cannon rose to the occasion, determined that Jack Smith was unconstitutionally and unlawfully appointed and that Jack Smith essentially stole $24 million from the U.S. Treasury because Congress never appropriated those funds because Jack Smith, a private citizen, is not uh, anybody who has any authority to prosecute Donald Trump or anybody else. Merrick Garland, thank God that man did not become a member of the Supreme Court proved himself to be as incompetent and disloyal as always. This is Robert Govea's pick on it. I like Robert Govea's channel. Robert Govea Esquire, an attorney in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he's, he's had this one nailed from the beginning. I suggest if you want to get down into the nitty-gritty details, you go to his channel because he spends a couple hours every day going through the actual filings. Uh, we're not going to do that here. This is a, is a bit of a long clip because you have to know the facts about this and you have to know that this is going to screw up the Washington, D.C. case with Judge Chutkin as well. Judge Cannon made the right call here. That's going to go to appeal in the 11th Circuit. Judge Chutkin in the Washington, D.C. case is going to have to make a similar call. She's a Trump hater. She's never going to go along with Judge Cannon here. So the Second Circuit will get that appeal. Maybe they'll bypass those and end up in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's in recess until October. So uh, this, this kills off the two federal cases uh, until Donald Trump is sworn into office. Anyway, here's that, and enjoy. We got some serious business fresh out of the oven this bright and early Monday morning. We're gonna go through it. It is about 93 pages of goodness coming from Judge Eileen Cannon. Florida classified documents case was dismissed. We are very excited about this as we've been covering it for a long time. And so I want to get right into it. Let me share with you exactly what has happened. Judge Eileen Cannon dismisses the classified documents case. Woo, this is a good one. Excited to see it here. I want to start with just the final portion of the opinion, the order here. And then we're going to go through it in full after we see some reaction because there are meltdowns already taking place. We have Adam Schiff is crying from the rooftop. We don't even know what Jack Smith has said yet. Trump has a statement out. So does Thomas Massey and many others. But we're going to go through this full opinion because this is the end of the classified documents case. It's done. Watch this. Here, for the reasons set forth above, this is Judge Eileen Cannon presiding over this, writes this right now. This is now ordered and adjudged as follows. Woo! Trump's motion to dismiss the superseding indictment based on the unlawful 
appointment and funding of sp special counsel. Yeah, Jack Smith is hereby granted. Oh, what does that mean? The superseding indictment is dismissed. Bye-bye, case is gone. Sorry, Jack. You lose the whole case. God. Oh, <laughs> the order shall not affect or weaken any of the protections for the classified information imposed in this case or any protective orders pertaining to the classified information. So all of that's still going to be under lock and key. But the clerk is directed, watch, to close this case. Oh, <laughs> Jack Smith, blown out. Oh, any scheduled hearings are canceled. Any pending motions are denied as moot. And any pending deadlines are terminated. Just like you, Jack. Done and ordered in chambers at Fort Pierce, Florida, this 15th day of July, 2024. So Jack Smith is done, not allowed to move forward in this case. The clerk is directed to close this case. And it only is confined to this proceeding. This court decides no other legal rights or claims. So Trump will turn around and say, oh, well, that's interesting because Jack Smith is also the special counsel in the January 6th case. Oh, in Judge Chutkin's courtroom. And so if that is true, if he is also the special counsel there and he's not lawfully appointed here, then he's not lawfully appointed there. Now, this case is not going to be binding on Judge Chutkin. Judge Chutkin could have a totally different opinion and will. And so this will obviously cause a circuit split. And so we'll have the D.C. Circuit versus the 11th Circuit going up to the Supreme Court. And so this case is likely going to go to the Supreme Court. This issue will likely arrive there at some point because Trump will make the same parallel argument with Judge Chutkin. She, of course, is going to deny that. She's going to say Jack Smith is absolutely lawful and appropriately appointed. But Cannon says no. And Cannon is basing this off of a part in part in the concurrence from the Trump case that came down from the Supreme Court, Justice Clarence Thomas was out here explaining that Jack Smith was not lawfully appointed. And not only that, Jack Smith was illegally appropriated. So he was taking money that was not his from the Department of Justice from their Get Trump slush fund. This is tremendous news. This is going to be absolutely devastating to the government's case. Not Obviously, in this case, it's done. They're done. They're going to appeal this, no doubt about it. But we'll see where that one goes because this is not a jury verdict or anything. So I'm sure that Jack Smith will be already discussing an appeal, but I want to go through this entirely. Okay. There's about 94 pages, 93 pages. You can see here, we're going to go through it before we do. Let's hit some of this reaction just so we can see the magnitude of this ruling. Trump came out. He posted this. He says, as we move forward in uniting our nation after the horrific events on Saturday, the dismissal of the lawless indictment in Florida should be just the first step, followed by the dismissal of all the witch hunts. Now, this case, as I said, will be persuasive to the January 6 hoax in Washington, but not binding. And it will really have no other relevance to any of these other state level claims because Jack Smith is only prosecuting the two federal claims. But Trump is right about this. Now, the immunity decision plus Jack Smith's unlawfulness are showing us clearly that all of these were political prosecutions. There was no basis for Jack Smith to even exist. He's not a U.S. attorney, was never appointed by the president, was never confirmed by the Senate, was illegal from the very beginning, and they prosecuted Trump anyways. Same thing with the DA zombie case from Manhattan. Trump had immunity. Trump layered in immunity. He uh, objected based on immunity during the trial and he was overruled. Judge Mercon just allowed the case to go forward. And now Trump is saying, you brought in evidence of my Oval Office conversations in my team, my employees were all part of the case. They were all testifying. We had Hope Hicks, White House communications director. We had Madeline Westerhout, Oval Office operations director, all testifying all Oval Office immunity stuff. So Trump continues. He talks about the New York AG scam, fake claims about a woman I never met, a decades old photo in a line with her and her husband does not count. Talking about E. Jean Carroll, Bergdorf getting Bergdorfed in a Bergdorf's and the Georgia perfect phone call charges, which is Fanny's case. 
The Democrat Justice Department coordinated all of these political attacks, that's true, which are an election interference conspiracy on their own against Joe Biden's political opponent, me. Let us come together to end all weaponization of our justice system and make America great again. And so Trump was out. We had other reaction from Thomas Massey. He says, last month I questioned Attorney General Garland about the constitutionality of Jack Smith's appointment. He did not have good answers. And we remember that exchange. He says, fast forward to today, Judge Cannon just dismissed the classified documents case against Trump, citing the unconstitutionality of Jack Smith's appointment because he is illegal. And we've read basically every single motion that has been on this case. And can we just say shout out and major congratulations to Ed Meese and Calabresi and the law professors and everybody else who submitted the amicus briefs on this issue. This was fought and fought and fought and it made the most logical sense. What the government was trying to claim by cobbling together all their statutes that that gave them power was obviously insane. So now justice has been done. Adam Schiff is very upset about this. He says, you know, today's precedent shattering decision in Florida is further proof that the guardrails of our democracy are coming down. It's like you guys are whacked. You know who knocked those guardrails over? You guys, when you indicted Trump in the first place with an illegal special counsel for charges that are fake. They were his documents and other people who've had the classified documents problems who were never the president, like Hillary, like Pence, like Senator Joe Biden, like VP Joe Biden, no charges for them. So guardrails of our democracy just means they're never ending power. Just substitute democratic power every time you hear democracy. The guardrails of our democratic power are coming down. That's true. That is true. Because uh, your, your democratic party is now being shown for what they are. Again, a partisan judge throws out decades of precedent which was all, by the way, this was all very complex precedent, okay? The statutes that they used to create the special counsel may work for somebody who is an actually U.S. attorney of the government, right? Somebody who is appointed by the president, confirmed by the Senate. So it applies to somebody who is, it's actually not, I don't, we'll, we'll read the opinion, but he says to reach a desired political outcome, which is hilarious because that's all they're doing. He says justice is, is again delayed so it may be denied. And Adam Schiff, I don't think he has it in his ex profile, but just let's, let us not forget that this guy got censured like a total loser for being a liar about basically everything. So it represents California's 30th district. I think he wants to be a senator now, but he didn't include in his little bio there that he's been censured because he doesn't want you to know about that. Ben Garrison went very quickly. I don't know how he does it so quickly, but our friends over on Locals shared this one this morning. This is Jack Smith's worst nightmare. And I don't know if this is new or if he had already prognosticated this, but case dismissed. Trump comes in with pizza for everyone. What a nice guy, man. Trump. Jack Smith having a bad Monday morning. That's for sure. They had all their eggs in the Jack Smith basket. Fanny's totally blown out of the water. We've got sentencing, which is now delayed for the Alvin Bragg case. So we're going to see what happens with the Jack Smith case in Judge Chutkin's courtroom, but that's got to come back down for immunity decisions and evidentiary hearings. And so Jack Smith is just having a bad, bad day because he's a terrible person and deserves it. Here's one from Jonathan Turley. Says the dismissal of the classified documents case is a seismic development, no doubt. From the beginning of all these cases, I've said that the Mar-a-Lago case was the greatest threat to the former president. It is now gone, gone. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. And we were a little concerned. I think your boy here may even have said that I don't think Ch Cannon's going to do this. Pretty sure I said that. This was a big deal. This is a big move. And it's absolutely the right decision. We've read through every single amicus brief from Ed Meese and the other individuals, and it's the right decision. We're going to read it here in a second. But I wanted to share some reaction. Here is how MSNBC was reporting it this morning. Let's see if they're happy about this. But this was their news. Breaking news on the classified documents case. Let's get right to Ken Delanian. Ken. What's the latest, Ken? Jose, in a remarkable development, Judge Aileen Cannon in Florida has dismissed 
dismissed the indictment against Donald Trump in this classified documents case and his co-defendants on the grounds that the appointment of the special counsel violated the appointments clause of the Constitution. This is an issue that has been litigated in other special counsels, has never succeeded, but Judge, Judge Aileen Cannon has accepted the arguments of the defense that the uh, uh, appointment of Jack Smith and other special counsels, by inference, has been improper and illegal. And I'll just read you uh, briefly from the opinion here. She says, the bottom line is this. The appointments clause is a critical constitutional restriction stemming from the separation of powers, and it gives to Congress a considered yes. role in determining the propriety of vesting appointment power for inferior officers. Uh, the government's position, she says, effectively usurps that important legislative authority, transferring it to a head of department. Let me translate that. Yeah, we'll go through the whole thing. I thought that maybe they were going to give us some opinion here, but uh, looks like maybe not. So Alina Abba also came out, says, the unlawful appointment and funding of special counsel Jack Smith has been a critical factor of the sham documents case. This dismissal marks the first step in ending the weaponization of our justice system, restoring the rule of law, and making America great again. Yeah, Jack Smith, if they really wanted to go after Trump, they could have just appointed a special counsel who was a U.S. attorney. That would have been interesting if, of them to do that. Now, we know that they know how to do that because they've done that before. So remember, when Joe Biden ordered Merrick Garland to go after Trump. Trump came out, or I'm sorry, Merrick Garland came out and appointed Jack Smith to prosecute Trump. Jack Smith was not appointed by the Senate, not confirmed, I'm sorry, appointed by the president or confirmed by the Senate. But then when Joe Biden had his classified documents, guess what happened? Merrick Garland came out and appointed Robert Hur. Remember Robert Hur? So Robert Hur, as we know, is an actual United States attorney for the District of Maryland. Oh, isn't that interesting? So Robert Herr was appointed by the president, was confirmed by the Senate. So Jack Smith, who was not, was not appropriate. And as we know, as we can see here, the DOJ knows how to select U.S. attorneys to be special counsels. So it's nothing out of the ordinary. They know how to do it. They just chose to pick Jack Smith because... He is their hatchet man, and they're very excited about him doing their bidding. It worked out well for him until it didn't. Now they have lost. So that's exactly right. This is going to go to appeal. Judge Chutkin has it in for Trump. Judge Cannon was a very fair judge. She was, an, a, a, she was a Trump appointee, and she has denied a number of Trump's motions, um, she has not shown any favoritism toward Trump, nor against Trump. And so, you know, she's a pretty impressive judge. Good pick by Donald Trump, as compared to the absolute dirtbags we see coming out of the Biden administration. All right, so we need to, um, we need to applaud that this case is dismissed. All of, all of the Trump cases are going away in one way or another. The conviction in New York, if it's not overturned by Judge Mershon himself, it's going to be overturned by an appellate court. That case is done. Florida case is done. The D.C. case is going to be done. The only thing, the only case remaining is Fat Fanny down in Georgia, and that one is going to be done uh, both because of the immunity case and because the the, the the court in Georgia is going to throw Fannie off. No one in their right mind at this point wants to be prosecuting Donald Trump. It is so obviously a political ploy. It is the Biden administration trying to take Donald Trump out because they knew he would beat Joe Biden. And he's going to beat Joe Biden. At this point, that writing's on the wall. Now, let's talk about the shooting. Um, I shoot a lot of AR-15s. I've shot tens of thousands of rounds from AR-15s in about five different calibers. This was a 5.56. I'm assuming a standard 16-inch barrel. I don't know what scope this 20-year-old kid, Michael Crooks, had. But he never should have been anywhere near that rooftop. That never should have happened. 
I'm pretty sure it was his his first shot that was the shot that hit Donald Trump. Takes about a half a second for someone to react. By the way, your first shot is your most accurate shot. I'm not a great shot by any means at all. But I could have, from 150 yards, I could have put every round I fired into this little black pouch. There is no reason except God's will and this guy's poor aim because he couldn't get on his high school rifle team. There is no reason Donald Trump is alive today except by the grace of God. And, well, take a look at this first shot. I'm sure it's the first shot because it takes half a second, and he reacts just as the second shot's going off. And then the Secret Service performance is abysmal. Oh, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Man, that fist pump, that fight is going to go down as one of the most iconic photos in presidential history. An amazing shot, but the truth be told, it's sad that, that secret those Secret Service agents, who are, I think, his regular detail, didn't have him completely off that stage in about three seconds after they realized that the shooter was down. You heard him say the shooter's down. He should have, they should have moved him quickly. That wasn't rehearsed well enough. The shooter never should have been allowed to be where he was. I've heard a few different rumors. One of them is that the, the Secret Service snipers that took out the shooter were not the snipers just off to Donald Trump's right, 100 and something yards away from the shooter. But in fact, was a different group of Secret Service snipers counter snipers actually who were 480 yards away 480 yards away so anyway uh here's the shooter a terribly misguided young man 20 years old couldn't make the high school rifle team thank god uh, trying to bear claw his way um, up onto the roof, bear bear crawl his way, um, and a bunch. Of, you'll notice if you watch carefully. There's a bunch of idiot police walking around like, oh, wow, well, what? Someone on the roof? Oh, oh. you know. Bad planning, bad communication, bad team leadership, bad Secret Service agents around the president who didn't rehearse their job. 
And then these three incompetent women. Okay. Here's a shooter. And what you're about to see, or what we're about to show you, is a video where we kind of matched up the audio and the timing of the way everything else played to show that the um, shooter had accessed the roof just about 114 seconds. That means he accessed the roof, he got there, got in a position, and fired three shots at the former president um, in 114 seconds. You can take a look. Look, they're all pointing. The yeah. yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Right there, see him? He's laying down, see him? Yeah, he's laying down. And so I'm here with you fighting my to get a center. What's happening? And the next year we'll take back the white house because if we do, we're gonna make America better than ever before. We're gonna make it. Yeah, look. There he is. Because we have millions and millions of people in our country that should be here. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have dealers. We have people that should not be here. It's much tougher than that. So that clip alone, in isolation, doesn't really mean much. Um, but when you pull together all the other documentary evidence that we were able to gather, uh, we actually have a quite a compelling picture of what happened that day. So that building was about 135 meters from where the stage where Donald Trump was speaking. And there was a car park and multiple large buildings next to it as well, meaning there were multiple access points. We did that by effectively looking at satellite images, looking at multiple videos from the rally, um, and we also matched up the, president, uh, the former president's speech uh, with what we can hear there as well. Uh, in the aftermath of the shooting, video had circulated of this exact building of a man uh, or the body of a man lying on that roof in that same position. And based off official reports, this d seemed to have been um, the shooter, uh, Thomas Crooks. That being the case, uh, Kevin, you know, truth and accuracy has always been a central tenet of, of journalism. What are the extra steps media organizations are taking to, you know, to reinforce this mission? Well, that's a pretty comical question. The only... Um the only thing I can think of that the media and journalists are doing is conspiring with the government against Donald Trump. Donald Trump is fighting for us. I don't believe this kid was part of a conspiracy per se, but it's pretty clear to me that the Secret Service didn't do their damn job. And Chatterley or whatever her name is, little DEI Biden appointee, needs to, needs to be fired. Biden's not going to fire anybody. She needs to be fired. Maybe she has the dignity and the common decency to resign. I don't know. But she needs to go. We can't have this. Just today, it was just today that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. got his Secret Service protection by Mayorkas, the despicable impeached head of DHS. I, I, I just don't know what to say. I, I don't know how you can't, how people can't see that this is the government on a hope and a prayer, leaving the door open for someone like this 20 year old kid. And thank God it was this 20 year old kid who can't shoot straight instead of somebody who can shoot straight because it that was an easy shot that was just outside of what you would call close range just barely into medium range for an AR15 and it, and there's no excuse for it here's uh here's Maria Bartiromo talking about Maybe Jill Biden, because she was in Pittsburgh, took some of the security away from Trump. The Secret Service this weekend should have been overstaffed, not understaffed. There shouldn't have been any scarcity of resources. There's no excuse for this. This is morally reprehensible behavior by a morally reprehensible administration.
Fox News contributor and former FBI special agent Nicole Parker. Nicole, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. There are many questions this morning as far as how anybody was able to get into a place to get off all of those shots and hit President Trump, potentially take him down. I want to get your take on the security uh, and obviously a failure from uh, security in that regard. Um, first of all, thank you for having me, Maria. It's always a pleasure to join your program. Um, you know, we're all just shaking our heads, especially those in law enforcement. You know, I've worked events with uh, Secret Service in the past and how this ever occurred is mind boggling and it's actually terrifying for America. If a 20 year old can disrupt the political process in the United States and ignite this massive firestorm, uh, look at our adversaries. Can you imagine they're probably sitting back laughing? This is inexcusable, it is unacceptable, and how this occurred, it, it is a failure. It is a failure, you know, the investigation will come out eventually. Unfortunately, a lot of Americans do not trust the investigation by the FBI that's going to be conducted, but I know that, you know, Congress will be involved as well. How did this happen? How did the shooter ever get within that close proximity? 130 yards is extremely close, and it, it's, it's mind boggling. I think there are some major issues going on behind the scenes that a lot of us may not know or understand. Uh, there was an event that Jill Biden was actually attending on July 13th at the exact same time in the Pittsburgh area, the same time, the same location as President Trump. And I believe that the U.S. Secret Service is probably understaffed. They are being overworked, understaffed, underpaid, um, and, it, it's, and it's difficult. And so I imagine that maybe they were didn't have enough individuals for that event, and maybe they were relying more on the locals for the event, maybe delegating responsibilities. It's difficult. You don't want to point the finger, and you know, without the facts, I, I don't want to, you know, point the finger at the wrong individuals, but it is an epic fail. And yeah, President well, Trump well, is alive because of the grace of God, not because well, of anything else, because right. of luck and the grace of God. Well, look, what you to, to speak to what you just said, the real clear politics reporter uh, who was talking more about this over the weekend says that the problem, according to his Secret Service sources, was that Secret Service resources were diverted to the first lady, uh, Jill Biden. Um, and she had the event, as you just said, and they were taken away from Trump because they claimed they followed agency protocol applying to Trump as a former president, according to two sources within the Secret Service community, which is what real clear politics is reported. Now, I want to point out that the Secret Service and the White House are denying this. They're saying, no, we did not divert any uh, a a any security from Trump. Uh, so we've got, he said, she said, going on. But certainly there are growing calls for the Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle to resign after the total right. security breakdown at that Pennsylvania rally. Critics say that she's dropped the ball because she's too busy focusing on woke diversity, equity and inclusion policies. Nicole, your reaction? My reaction is that where was she or where was any representative from the United States Secret Service at the initial press conference? I mean, that is their site. They should have had a representative there. Why have we not heard from her yet? Americans want to understand if it is not as important enough for her to show her face in the light of a former president, you know, a potential assassination. If there is a time for her to come forward, it is now. And, and it's just radio silence. It's unacceptable. And she has this plan in place. It's very well known. You know, by 2030, she wants 30 percent of, you know, female staff at the Secret Service. Maria, why should that matter? We should be focused on protecting. That is the job of the Secret Service. Anything else is a distraction. Any of this diversity, equity, inclusion, any of this, is, it's a distraction from the true mission. And I saw the same exact thing at the FBI, unfortunately. I started to wonder. Am I working for a social justice warrior club or am I working for the okay. FBI? And I've heard that the Secret Service is even worse than the FBI in that regard. We were getting constant emails about every diversity club under the sun. That is not your job when you are coming in as a federal agent. You are coming to protect and, and to serve the American people. And if that's the case, it is wrong. They yeah. should be spending yeah. the money being spent on the diversity programs. Why don't you spend that money on advancing your technology, getting some drones? Some drones could have prevented the entire fiasco and potential tra tragedy of losing a former president. But, but it's, it's, it's focus is somewhere else, and it's just not right. Well, I mean, it's the same criticism that we hear about the overall military, uh, that, you know, when you're talking about the military, you want people to focus on readiness. That's what the priority ought to be, not anything else. So, Nicole, you make uh, the right point spot on. Always good to talk with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's right. 
She makes a good point, but she also makes excuses for them. And there's no excuse for this. This is abysmal. There is no rational excuse for this. If it wasn't planned, then it is grotesque incompetence. Okay. Listen, I hope you have a great week. I hope you have enjoyed the show. Let me know what you want me to do because I haven't been doing very many videos. This channel will never get monetized. So I'm just trying to get people some concise information and cherry pick what I think is relevant. If you like this sort of thing, give me a like, put, put a comment in, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. You know, we need to stick together as conservatives and Trump supporters. Give me a chance with you. And look, you have a fantastic week. God bless. Get ready, stand by.